So we'll also have a flexible variety of devices to support our taxpayers at a minimum cost. And the beauty about this is that this software is upgradable. So once you've acquired your device uh, is upgraded, the software is upgradable. So ruling out the issue of the device becoming obsolete. Yeah. We'll also have faster processing of VAT refunds. Like we know right now, you have to provide evidence of your invoices for you to receive your refunds. But what we are saying with eTeams is we'll have the data of the sales that you transact every month in the KRA system. So by this, our VAT refunds office will have a very minimum time. It will be faster for them to process re these refunds because they have the database already vis-a-vis -vis asking you now for invoices for them to confirm. No, we'll have the data and thus we'll expect faster processing of your VAT refunds. So we also have stock management module that will assist our taxpayers maintain their own inventory. The item system has been curated in a beautiful manner to allow you to manage your inventory. For those of us who've engaged uh, with uh, systems, systems uh, that allow us to do stock management, you can attest to how that simplifies um, management or keeping eye on your inventory. And so our e-clients, or rather our system, our applications allow you to do so. We also have simplified return filing. This is the pre-filled achievable, pre-filled return, which is achievable through integration previous slide please thank you uh, the simplified return filing we are expecting to have our automated return come february so you'll be able to see how that will be simplified so we no longer have the excel the manual filing what we look to have is a pre-filed uh, return where you download you download the excel just like you were downloading, but now what it will have, it already have the data of the sales and purchases pre-filled. So all you have to do is confirm whether it is a true reflection of what has been happening in the month in your business. It also allows you to add on to the sales that may not have been captured for various reasons, probably uh, uh, network connectivity, that, uh, that made them not uh, to reflect in the system. We also have non-intrusive verification, non-intrusive verification of tax processes. Again, like I said, we have the data of the sales that you've made for the month. So our compliance officers, we no longer have to ask you to come to the office or, uh, you know, bombard you, uh, ask you to bring all these invoices in files. If we can have that digitally, you know, even in the times that we're moving now into our digital times, it makes things very fast and efficient, and that's what we are looking to have. Next slide. We have ETM software solutions. So currently, these are the solutions that we have. We have the ETM Paypoint windows, which is suitable for taxpayers selling goods at a single location with a single paypoint or cashier till and it runs on a computer or laptop with windows 10 and above operating system so please note that windows the windows should be windows 10 and above and this also contains the stock management module we also have the items multi paypoints multi paypoint windows The items multi paypoint windows is suitable for taxpayers selling goods and having multiple locations and pay points or cashier tills.
This also runs on a laptop or computer with Windows 10 and above. And again, it contains the stock management module. Third, we have the eTeams PayPoint Android, which can be installed on your tablets or your phone. And this runs on a, uh, it runs on an Android version 8 and above. And again, it contains the stock management module. So please note this, for the computer or laptop, they need to be Windows 10 and above. And for your tablet or your phone, it requires to be Windows uh, version 8 and above. Next slide. ATEMS online portal is also another solution that we have. And like I said, basically the online portal will be web-based. That means you can access this anywhere, anytime, as long as you have network connectivity. By this, you visit the ATEMS portal and you invoice as required, as per need, yeah? So this does not require a device. The online portal runs as web-based. And lastly, we have the virtual sales control unit, that's the VSEU, or online sales control unit, the OSEU. And it provides for a system-to-system -system integration between the taxpayers' billing system and KRA. And like I said, basically, the, the integration, the system-to-system -system or the API connection is for taxpayers who have bulk invoicing, and it will be cumbersome for them to use these other solutions. So. Please note, there's a note there, approved as the third party integrators and they are published on the KRA website. So you can visit our website and take a look at the third party integrators that can assist you on the system to system. So now we have the items onboarding uh, procedure. You can see this, uh, we have our taxpayers when they are onboarding. You visit the ETIMS page or website, that's the ETIMS.KRA.GO.KE. We have sign up, where you sign up, you click on sign up, it asks you to input your PIN, you input your PIN, you click on verify, and your data is auto-populated. So please note that the data auto-populated is as uh, on ITAX, yeah? It's basically a replica of the data that we have on ITAX. So I'll urge you to confirm. We, you'll see that we'll have the last three digits of the phone number there. You're required to confirm that the last three digits are the last ones of your mobile number. This is key because you're supposed to receive an OTP that you require for you, for you to complete sign up. Yeah. So if the number, the last three digits are not correct, we require you to check on your iTax portal and confirm whether the phone number there is one that you can access. And if it is not, please update before you proceed. So once you finish a uh, sign up, this is you're creating an account and the data is verified. Again, you'll get the OTP, that's the one-time password. Uh, you were able to create a unique password, which is of 12 characters, and that's how you complete sign up. So after sign up, you will log in. You will log in with your PIN and the password, the unique password that you've created during sign up. Once you log in, we are going to have document submission, which requires the ID of the director and the commitment form. You can download the commitment form. It's on our KRA website. And also please note that the ID that you upload should be one of the director that is recognized on ITAX. If there's any modification or there has been change, uh, please do that beforehand. Update the same on ITAX first before you can upload the ID. Because if it is not one that recognized on ITAX, will reject your request and then you'll be you'll be required uh, to apply again so once you do submission we are able to approve from our end and then software installation uh, follows and once we install the software you now can be able to generate your invoice and transmit and your data is received in our KRA system next slide 
So items uh, installation by taxpayer representatives. This is very key. We've been having our taxpayers send agents or third party that intend to install the items on their behalf. So what would like you to note is that we require an introductory letter which should be signed and stamped, preferably on the should be on the taxpayer's letterhead. And the letter should contain their contact information. That is the contact information of you, the taxpayer, that is now sending your representative. We also require a field commitment form, which also should be signed and stamped. And this you can download from our KRA websites. Lastly, we need confirmation of directorship. That is the copy of the ID. Again, remember, it is the director that is recognized on ITAX and the CR12 or the CR12. Please note that when making an application for items on behalf of the concerned trader, the letter should be uploaded together with the commitment form. That is for our tax agents uh, that are doing the installation or application. Please attach that with the commitment form. All right. So as you can see, we have a sample of the items tax invoice, VAT. That is what it looks like. And it has the unique features that you need to look out for, for you to confirm it is a legitimate uh, items receipt. We have the seller pin, which automatically shows on the invoice because the data auto populates from my tax, like we said. We also have the buyer pin. You'll note that when you use our, our softwares or solutions, we require you to have the buyer pin for you to complete sale. This is key so that they can also be able to claim inputs when they need to do so, when they need to claim for their input tax. We also have the invoice number. So like previously, we used to have the unique invoice uh, numbers. ETIMS also has unique invoice number for every invoice. And lastly, we have the QR code. This is the digital signature that you can scan and uh, we can be able to confirm that that invoice is indeed recognized by KRA as legit. So next slide, we have a sample of our also our, uh, our non-VAT invoice. Again, same features, but the di difference as you can see on the tax summary is the computation. So previously, for the ones that were VAT, on the computation part, you realize, and the tax rate, you realize that previously on this computation, thank you, Mina, you'll see that we have the tax rate showing a 16% and also there's the calculation of the tax amount. But now when we move to the non-VAT receipts, the rate, the tax rate there is, is 0% or uh, not there, not av available. It's non-VAT, as you can see, NV for non-VAT. And also for the tax amount is zero because it's not VAT, it's other tax rate. Okay, so and again, all other features. Next slide. We have a sample of the team's tax invoice. This is the previous receipt that we had uh, on generation using the ETR register that was team's compliance. We also still have the devices still in use as at now. Further guidance is to be provided on that. But if you have a, a Teams invoice, that's what it looks like as projected. It has features as the buyer pin, the control unit serial number, or rather the ETR device serial number. We also have the control unit invoice number, which is a unique invoice number for every invoice. And lastly, we have a QR code that you can scan and confirm from our website whether it is recognized in our system. Please note the public notice where we have regulations under the Income Tax Act, CAP 470, and the Tax Procedures Act, CAP 469B. And it states that in compliance with the Statutory Instruments Act 2013, the Commissioner General on behalf of the Cabinet Sec Secretary for the National Treasury and Economic Planning 
has reviewed the regulations or rules under the above legislations and developed the following draft regulations. One, the income tax turnover tax regulations 2023 and the tax procedures electronic tax invest regulations 2023. In compliance with the same act and on behalf of the cabinet secretary for the national treasury and economic planning, the commissioner general invites interested members of the public and stakeholders to submit their inputs and comments for consideration in finalizing the above regulations. So these regulations, these draft regulations have been posted on the KRA websites www.kra.go.ke you may download the same for your reference so please channel your submissions uh, on our contacts as shown on that public notice next slide you can get in touch with us uh, as shown our email is teamsupport at kra.go.ke and our contact numbers are as projected. Our office is at Jaqua Towers, 8th floor, Kenyatta Avenue, and we are ready to assist and facilitate you on your compliance, on your tax compliance. Thank you very much. I believe we've come to the end of our presentation and now we'll move on to our Q&A session where we'll pick up on your queries, your questions. I see we have uh, a lot of questions on our chat box. Please put in your questions on our chat box and we'll be able to address the same. Thank you very much. I call on to Velma Miguta. Take it up from there. Thank you so much, Linz. Good morning once more. I hope I'm audible enough. I can see from uh, the chat box, most of the questions have been responded to by my other colleagues. Unless there's a question which has not been answered, I would request that the taxpayers raise their hands so that we can unmute if they ask the questions. But most the majority of the questions within the chat box have been answered. Yes, sir, Sharon. Maybe I can do uh, I can read one that just came. Okay. It's saying, what if a person owns one room which he take rent from, 
can it be paying tax oh i don't believe this i think it's for rental mm -hmm. there's one which is saying can you raise a credit note on items if we are done the invoice on teams thanks sharon for that question the the answer is you can only raise a credit note from the device or the from the solution that was uh, the the previous invoice was generated from what this means is that if you re if you generated an invoice from teams device the credit note can only be generated or raised rather from the same teams device and vice versa thank you all right uh, one is saying can one mix use of e teams and etr devices for different sites with same pin different sites or what does that mean does does that mean like uh, they have having a branch so i'll answer the question in two folds let's say you're having a teams device still generate and transmit the invoices you will still continue using the teams device as is unless it's faulty the second bit of the question is if you already have the teams device but again you have a branch let's say you've opened a different branch the other branch you can register for items but unless the device is faulty is when you can move over from teams to items okay thank you Uh, someone is saying um what about businesses like supermarket do they still need to enroll on e teams velma are you there sharon someone is asking what about businesses like supermarkets do they still need to enroll on e teams Sharon? Velma, can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. I was reading a question. Someone is saying. Yes. OK, just a moment. In fact, I just lost that question again. Oh, she's saying, what about businesses like supermarkets? Do they still need to enroll on e -teams? Thank you for that question. For Businesses who are like supermarkets, I would also. Velma, you're breaking. I would also. You can hear me now. No, you're so faint. And now, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Now, for businesses like the supermarkets. Yes. The taxpayer needs to clarify, have they all already automated their billing system? That's one. Yes. And again, they would also need to tell us what have they been using from the time the business was set up. So for instance, if this business was set up just recently, that is their new entrance in the market and they already have a billing system, we already approved five third party integrators within our website. So the way to go about it is the taxpayer is to contact any of the five third party integrators. They, the, the third party integrator visit their premises, analyzes the billing system they have in place. If it is an integratable with the system they are offering. If it's so is when the supermarket or the taxpayer proceeds in uh, making a service request that is application for items for the integration to happen. If they do not have a billing system, we can also install for them the eTeams multi pay point. That is, if they have different pay points but sharing the same network within the business. I hope the taxpayer is within the call so that they can understand it better. Okay. Thank you, Velma. And another one is saying, um, do companies on Teams need to enroll on eTeams? The answer is yes and no. Why do I say yes and no? If you're already on items, 
and the team's device is faulty that is not performing the other functionalities i earlier mentioned that is transmission signing and uh, generation of the same the taxpayer needs to do the changeover that is moving from teams to items but if the team's device is functional the taxpayer needs to continue using the team's device as is thank you all right thank you um there's another one who's saying how do mds come in as a withholding agent what's expected of them Uh, Velma, maybe we we'll leave that question. Then we'll still console. I'm just trying to see what is um what does he mean? Does she mean by MDS? Maybe she can write it on uh in full. And then someone else is saying, okay, that one is for rental. Someone is saying, if I have one room taking rent from, should I be paying tax too? Okay, if it's it will if it means the threshold, yes, you will have to pay tax. If it means a monthly threshold of which it's at, at the moment is 24,000, yes, you'll have to pay tax. Sharon? Sharon? Uh, Velma, it's Caroline. I'm taking it from Sharon. Okay. Hi, uh, team. My name is Caroline Tsuma, and uh, as you've heard, I'm taking it away from Sharon. So Helen is asking, does faith-based hospitals need to register on eTeams? Mm. Yes. Thank you, Caroline um the answer is yes because exempt is still part of vat and within the hospital probably their the sales they are making or supplies that they are having which are vatable so even if they're exempted they will they also issue invoice so the catch here is the issuance of invoice which it has clearly been specified within the public notice and the law that as long as you are issuing an invoice, it must come from a Teams or eTeams enabled device. So the answer is yes, they need to register for eTeams because they are involved in the business of generation of an invoice. Thank you. Back to you, Caroline. I can also see several questions of migrating from Teams to eTeams. Like Mohammed is asking, if we are on Teams, do we need to migrate on eTeams? I'll integrate the same question with uh, someone who was asking um yeah is it teams purely a software solution or do you still need to purchase a device what do businesses that want to shift from teams to e teams require thank you caroline back to the first question i think we have uh, responded to it and i i'll just uh echo the same sentiments I'd given earlier. If you're on items and your device is operational, by operational, I mean the device can generate, sign and transmit the invoice data, please continue using your team's device as is. Unless the device is not able to perform the three functionalities I've mentioned, then you need to do the changeover to items. The second question the taxpayer is asking if items is purely a software based solution the answer is yes eTeams is a software based solution which is either installed on your laptop desktop mobile phone pda or you do integration depending on your business setup and if you have a billing system thank you Um, thank you for that, Velma. Uh, Winfred is asking, a residential landlord supposed to board eTeams? Is team system completely, 
is team system completely use, uh, useless for January? That is teams. Uh, if teams will be useless come January and are residential landlords supposed to board e-teams? Thank you so much, Caroline. That question is a bit, uh, I would not want to say the question is interesting, but I think it's just the mis misconception that the taxpayers are having that when the public notice has been issued that from 1st of January 2024, the only claims which will be done are invoices from items. That is just the claims for people who have not onboarded. It does not necessarily mean that if you're on teams, it will be rendered null and void or useless. I will still emphasize on my previous feedback that I gave. That is, if your Teams device is functional, please proceed with using the same as is. It will not be rendered useless. You will still be operational because the major aim of introduction of uh, Teams and eTeams was to for the transmission of the VAT data electronically, and both Teams and eTeams does the same thing. It is the same system is only that one is a device and another one is a software based so please note that the public notice did not put emphasis outside to the public that come january 2024 teams devices will be rendered useless thank you thank you velma joseph is also asking a small business that sells in cash to retailers and also to organizations such as a butchery selling to restaurant to a restaurant. Does the butcher needs to enroll? Thank you so much. That question I will answer it in two folds. By that, uh, if you are running a butchery business, you know now food supplies is uh, exempt because there's no value add. Things like meet are exempt because there's no value add. The question to the taxpayer, which requires clarity, is if he's doing supplies, let's say to Yes. So let's say you are supplying from this butchery, you're supplying to Farmer's Choice. Farmer's Choice will be required to they will want to claim probably the expenses they had incurred getting this meat and maybe turning it to the final product, probably sausages, the ham and the rest. So for them to do the claims on the expenses, you as the supplier will be required to register for items. And this is how it happens. You might be wondering why are you registering for items? Yes, you are exempt and you're not meeting the threshold because farmer's choice or the taxpayer you're dealing with would want to claim any expense the claimable expense within this transaction within their business you will be required to register for items but not vat so you will be able to generate an invoice which is non-vat to enable the taxpayer you are supplying the meat to claim the expenses involved here between thank you Uh, thank you, thank you, Velma. Um, I can see several questions on withhold on on uh, MRI, but we will skip that. Um, someone is asking Raphael for flower exportation company who consolidates a shipment at the airport and raises a consolidated invoice for shipping purposes. Do they need to have an eTeams account? Thank you, Caroline. If I understood you correctly, these are consolidators, right? Yes, yes, they are. So for for every consolidator, I'm made to understand that the way I, I understand their operations, they consolidate the flowers and the export probably in one container, right? And however much the flowers and the exports are zero rated, and uh, initially I'd indicated that even zero rate is still part of VAT, an invoice is still required. So the consolidator is required to register on items to enable them generate an invoice. 
I hope you are clear. Caroline? I hope you have answered. I hope you have answered that question as well. Um, John is asking, after migrating to ETIMS, what it what is the process of filing VAT? Also, before responding to that question, Velma, I can see most people are mentioning their businesses and then they're asking if they are supposed to to register for VAT or they're supposed to board ETIMS. So maybe um you can mention to them um the requirements um for for ob obtaining the obligation of VAT and also um enrolling to items as well so maybe you can answer that and john john's question of after migrating to items what is the process of filing vat caroline i missed the first question i only got the, got the question on john on vat probably expound on the first one. Oh yeah john is asking after migrating after migration to items what is the process of filing vat and then I have also realized this is just um, my contributions. I have seen most people mentioning what they are doing and then asking if they are eligible for VAT and ETIM. So I was um, just thinking, maybe you can tell them the threshold of someone or uh, the requirements for someone who needs to enroll to VAT um, and uh, ETIMs as well. I'm asking. Thank you so much, Caroline. First, I will start with uh, the elaboration of uh, eligibility for a taxpayer to be registered for VAT. One, we have three folds on when a taxpayer can register for VAT. That is, if you meet the threshold of 5 million, if you're dealing with the withholding tax agents, there's the, the forceful registration and voluntary. So most of the taxpayers are asking, or the concerns of most taxpayers are asking now that this public notice went out that all the traders must be registered for item so what happens to me that i'm i've not met the threshold and i'm dealing with a taxpayer who wants an items invoice we are not saying that for issuance of an items invoice you must be registered for vat that is the misconception which the taxpayers are having out there what we are emphasizing on and as long as you're dealing with an invoice at uh, probably trading where an invoice is required, this invoice must pass through either teams or items. What does this statement mean? This only means that even if you're dealing in zero rate, you're, you are a non VAT taxpayer, that means you don't meet the threshold, you can as well register for items but as a non VAT, that is an non VAT taxpayer due to items, which will enable you issue an invoice. The invoice will be an items enabled invoice to enable the trader you're dealing with claim the claimable expenses within that period. The second question was the items and the VAT filing. Yesterday, a public notice went out that uh, come 1st of January 2024, we will start ben, uh, enjoying the benefit of the auto population of the VAT return. This means that as long as these invoices that has been generated have been transmitted, they will all be appearing in your ledger automatically. What a taxpayer will be required to do is verify these invoices, check if they were captured correctly and the amounts were captured correctly, then you submit we have not mentioned that now that we are going to start using the auto population of the vat return the taxpayers will not be required to file their returns you will still file your returns but it's only that we have uh, automated the process you will log into your itax profile the same way click on the auto population vat excel the invoices which have been transmitted will populate then all you need to do is validate and send the same Thank you. Back to you, Carol. Thank you, Velma. Um, I can see some uh, the questions are also being responded on the chat. So if I have skipped your question, kindly check on the chat box. Uh, there are several people from our team also responding to the same. Velma, there is a question here. Uh, someone is asking, we are buying processing materials from small scale farmers with no knowledge on teams and e teams requirements. 
how will we now report those purchases? Carol, Carol, I lost you. Oh, uh, okay. Let me, yes, yes. Yes, Velma, sorry for that, sorry for that. Um, I was, I was telling, I was telling our participants that in case I have skipped their questions, there's a team um, from our side that are responding to their questions. So in case I skip, they, uh, they should forgive me for that. And then there's one particular question Peter is asking, we are buying processing materials from small scale farmers with no knowledge on teams and items requirements. How will we now report those purchases? Thank you so much, Carol, and the taxpayer who has brought that. Indeed, we acknowledge that there are some taxpayers who might not be having this information, but we also encourage the taxpayers to enlighten them. As you all know that education is power and knowledge is also power. Please pass the same knowledge we have passed to you now to the traders you're dealing with. Encourage them to enroll on items. It's not a tedious process. It's a very simple process. And as long as you've enlightened them, the importance of them onboarding items, they will be able to generate the invoice. Unfortunately, you will not be able to claim any expense or you cannot be able to report any purchases which you have not passed through items. So as long as you're trading with someone who is not on items, so just try to enlighten the traders you're dealing with to onboard items. If they're not able to understand, just tell them that we normally have sessions every day between Tuesday to Thursday. We are having sessions. They can even visit any of the care offices. They will be trained on how items is applicable on the VAT return, the purchases, and all the claims that they need to make. Thank you. Well, but there is someone who is appreciating our, uh, the presentation that just took place. So Matthew is saying, thank you, Madam, for your presentation on ETIMS. If I may ask, can you register separate ETIMS profile with one mobile number? That is, uh, you register uh, under a company and under sole proprietor. Thank you so much, Carol. Uh, for the mobile number, Velma, we lost you. Carol, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. Maybe, now, yeah. I was saying that uh, with the mobile number, it's possible to use it on different ETIMS applications. The only thing that cannot happen is using the same device. Let's say you're having a phone number to register for different ETIMS applications. By that, I mean, if it's a phone, that phone can only be used for one pin. If it's a laptop, you can only register one laptop for one pin. So it's one pin, one device. But the mobile number, you can use the same mobile number for different pins and for different applications but the device, the installation is being done on, that is the one which is limited to one pin, one device. Thank you. Okay, I can see uh, someone is also asking us from Django, how can I claim the expenses? I think it's the same question with the one um, for someone who was accessing or getting their their goods from someone who has no knowledge on on items but uh maybe do you have a response for that velma the the one who is asking um what to Django, how do i claim the expenses and i think it also goes hand in hand with nicholas who is asking my client is doing recycling and buying scrap from parking boys how do you educate the parking boys to on board Thank you so much, Carol. Uh, sasa hapa kwa watu wa mjengo, 
eh, sasa hapo pia nataka uo mtu can you mute the person because now this I will respond to the way I'm understanding it but if the person is within the conversation one where is the claim coming from if you're dealing in mjing but as long as there's any claim which we, let's say you're going to claim any expense within this mjengo, lazim we enroll e teams. But if the taxpayer is within the, the call, please unmute them so they can expound a little bit on this mjengo business so that I can expound further. Thank you. I can see Caroline is asking, how do we tie or reconcile the e teams teams to iTax? How do we get the data transmitted to KRA? Is there a timeline or a cutoff or correction on items done in error on items? You're breaking, you Verma. You're, you're breaking. Karen, now, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. The taxpayer is asking if with e teams or teams, is there a way, or is the asking if teams, is there a way I can correct any anomalies that uh, arose during generation of an invoice? If I got the question correctly? Yes, yes. Okay. Both e teams and e teams provide that provision of you correcting the anomalies you have uh, made while generating an invoice, either through a credit note or a debit note. But this is limited to six months. So the provision, the law does not change. Whether you're using Teams or eTeams, the law provides that the taxpayer can either generate a credit note or a debit note to correct any anomalies within the invoice that they had previously generated. But this one is applicable within the six months of the invoice generation. Thank you. Thank you, Velma. Eliza Fan is asking where a company was put uh, to spe on special table due to nil filing and not boarding on teams and the company is no longer in business. Do they still need to onboard before deactivating the obligation? Thank you so much, Carol, and I appreciate the taxpayer who has brought it up. Indeed, uh, it's a subject which uh, needs some clarity to the taxpayers. If you are on the special table because you are a nil filer, you need to visit your tax station, tell them that you are no longer in business. If you are no longer in business, there's no need of you onboarding items. The Tax station will just do their audit and compliance check. It's a process, it's not a process which you go today and you come out with your VAT deactivated. It's quite a process. Their documentation you'll be required to produce that your tax station. Then they will do a compliance and audit check. Thereafter, the VAT will be deactivated. But if you're in the process of deactivation or you want deactivation of VAT from your PIN, there's no need of registration to ETIMS. Thank you. Velma, so the one who had asked about uh, what I'm doing or how do I claim their expenses, he has um, he has responded by saying we pay Mjengo laborers daily wages. That's between 500 and 1,000 per fundi. Should each of them enroll to items? Thank you so much, uh, Carol. Within the presentation that my colleague my colleague Links was doing, there was part of exemptions, right? And uh, wages and salaries are part of uh, the exemptions that are not chargeable to VAT and an invoice is not required. So that one falls under that. And uh, uh, I've just seen uh, a taxpayer asking if you can share the same presentation. We will share the same presentation. So if you're the one asking about the Mjengo, just go to the slide which is talking about the ex, uh, the exemptions and wages, uh, the wages, the salaries, and 
probably those incentives you're giving to your workers, those are exempt. So you will not need items on the same. Thank you. Thank you, Velma. I had also seen the question of someone asking for the presentation. We are live on KRA TV. KRA TV is on YouTube and also when you just uh, type www.kratv.go.ke it will take you uh, right uh, right um to our website where KRA TV is also based we um kindly just look for the presentation that is on items and today's date it is under under the bar live uh, so kindly also do, feel free to like subscribe share and just go through the videos that we have posted. There are so many, so many, so many trainings uh, that have taken place. You can just go through the trainings and get um, more information about ETIMS. Also, we have done videos on ETIMS, everything all the way from registration to uh, invoice uh, to you, you, you getting your invoice. Um, they are all there. So just go through the videos and the live sessions and the trainings that have been posted. I can see there are so many questions um, streaming in. And I think everyone is trying to mention their business and how they can go about, uh, like someone is also asking for company expenses such as transport from, uh, from point A to point B. How do we book for that? Um, Someone, someone else is also asking, how do we record transport expenses? Well, mom, I think you can you can check it away. Thanks, Carol. For transport business, okay, I don't want the taxpayers to overthink what it is, because the moment we start overthinking, we will be more confused than from the time we came in. So we just need to just have an open mind. And the only thing you need to understand is as long as you want to claim any expense on your PIN, where you are to lazimi toge kwa items, as long as there is no invoice which has been generated from items, whether you want to claim the, in, the expense or not, you will not be able to. KRA is only enforcing. We are not we are not here to change the way you conduct your business. The only thing we require the taxpayers to do is however you conduct your business, be it transport, be it mamamboga, be it a supermarket, you must conform to the laws which have been placed, which have been put in place. So yes, if you're in that transport business and you're intending to claim any expense which was involved, please ensure that the claim will only be done when an invoice has been in issued and it's from teams or e-teams devices thank you velma i can see several hands also raised let me start with michael gary um let me unmute him so that he can speak michael i have unmuted you yes we can hear you Mine is just uh, maybe the clarifications around those expenses that you might not really get a receipt. So I'm thinking of just things like maybe bank charges, uh, PESA charges. No one will ever give you a receipt for those. So how, how are you not able to claim those as a deduction for purposes of tax? And then the other one is just around, say, you have a subscription to someone who is not based in the country. So uh, say for example you work with a website developer who is not based in kenya uh, and of course they will bill you are you saying that also that expense is not tax deductible because that person of course he will not on board on items just to to give you an items compliant uh, invoice or sorry yeah for you now to to claim yeah thanks michael and of course i hear you Onboarding on a layman, the public notice which went out is very clear. As long as the invoice has not passed from items, you will not be able to claim 
any expense. Registration for items does not necessarily mean that you must register for e VAT. So it's very unfortunate that if an invoice has not been issued, no claims will be done on that same transaction. So it's very unfortunate, but I would urge you to just liaise with the person you're dealing with, the on board, the one for an VAT, then they'll be able to give you an invoice for you to claim the expenses on that transaction. Thank you. I can see Tabitha Nduta's hand is also up. Maybe we can unmute her and listen to what she has to say. Uh, hello, uh, good morning. Thank you very much, Elma and uh, Carol. Uh, so my question is almost back to the same as uh, Mr. Angari's question. So I think uh, the, the the session is about the introduction of section 23 on eatings, uh, but I feel like the notice sent by KRA is quite conflicting because it does not state the exemptions. So in whatever Mr. Angari has said, like you have a subscription from someone who is outside the country, then how do you treat that? Uh, I, I don't know why I would interpret that as an import. Can you be allowed then to claim that as an import? Because it's like you have imported that, uh, maybe a license. And I think some of those things are excluded from items. Or how will you do uh, treatment for someone who cannot really an, on board? You have someone who is supplying uh, to you outside the country, or uh, you have something like uh, what he has said, the bank charges. You paid for, um, for a ticket outside Kenya for an airline that does not operate in Kenya. Then does that mean uh, you'll not be allowed to claim that as a business expense and uh, you, of course, uh, incurred it for, for business? Or how, how would you treat that? Tabitha. Hi, Tabitha. Uh, hello, yes, uh, can you hear me, Velma? 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 Well, Matabita is responding to you. Can you hear me? Okay. Carol, yes, we can. Yes, I hope yes, yes, is we can within hear. the call, and uh, we have just printed the exams and airline ticketing. Airline ticketing is part of uh, the expenses which are uh, exempt, and you know you cannot claim on an exempt because there's no. VAT you have incurred on the same. And now I would just want to put the emphasis on the same. As long as an invoice has not been generated, 
and that transaction is not exempted, you will not be able to claim the expenses on the scene. We are together, Tabitha. Back to you, Carol. Thank you, Velma. So there are two questions that I will integrate. One, Hans is asking, address MPESA commission payouts. And then the second question, um, okay. <laughs> I, I think the question has disappeared, but uh, just give me a minute. Oh, yes, someone, uh, Michael is also asking, please clarify on bank charges and MPESA charges. Velma, can you hear me? Velma? Carol? Carol, yes. can you hear me? Yes, 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 I can. Okay. Now, this MPESA payouts, the taxpayer needs to put clarity on what these payouts are. We are they the payouts on the shareholders or which payouts? But I would want to respond that uh, th that is an in house or rather the business arrangement. So it is them to align their business functionalities to us to fit what we have brought about. But uh, Safaricom and PESA, those peculiar st the stakeholders we, whom we are having engagements with, e.g. the insurance companies, we are having uh, a conversation with them, their board members, so that we can uh, align their operations, they can align their operations to our operations to ensure that the invoice has been generated. So these are, these are conversations which are underway. We are having conversation with uh, Safaricom and M-Pesa as a whole so that they can align their processes, their business processes to ours to enable the invoice generation and the same. Thank you. Velma, in interest of time, allow me to be asking you to two questions. Uh, some someone is asking do you have do hair salons need to register for eating and there is also someone else who is saying please clarify that we will oh sorry not that one oh mm -hmm. okay carol the first one was carol hi carol Caro? Caro? Velma? Yes? I think because of time, we just respond to two questions, then probably address the taxpayers that if they need more clarity, they can visit any of the care offices or they can visit at Adequa Towers for clarity. So unless there's a burning question within the chat, that the taxpayer feels that if they leave this conversation without it being answered, probably it will hamper their business transactions. Please go ahead and uh, pick any of the two, then we'll respond. Thank you. Okay, let me let me do that. Um, there was one question concerning private school expenses. So he's, he's saying, please respond regarding private school expenses in CAD in paying part-time coaches who are not subjected to pay. Carol. Yes, Carol. Velma. Uh, this one, yes, I yes, just, Velma. Uh, the, the feedback, the question we had even populated on the same, because even if you're paying that, uh, the teachers on part-time, 
that form that still forms part of the salaries and wages and it's part it's on the slide nine when this presentation is being shared please rush to slide seven it outlines whatever is exempted from VAT and uh, issuance of a Teams or E-Teams invoice. So on slide seven, it expounds on the salaries and wages. And even if you're paying your teachers on uh, a part-time basis, it still falls part of the same. Thank you. Allow me to just ask this too, and then we will close on the session. She has repeated her question several times. Do hair salons need to register for E-Teams? And please clarify the issue of claiming bank-related charges. I think this one you had responded to it. Carol, the next question. Which one? Um, I think I had, I had asked you for the hair salons if the hair salons need to register for e teams and uh, benson who wants a clarification on the issue um issuance of claiming bank related charges the, okay the one for the bernard, last two one for bernard we had responded to the one for hair salon that one has not been exempted at any point the taxpayer needs to refer to the vat act section one and two on the supplies which are exempted so as long as it's not exempted and an invoice is required please let them on board items to issue an invoice thank you thank you velma for that it was a very insightful presentation i know there are so many questions that are untouched while some have been responded to in the chat. Thank you, Luis. Thank you, Velma. Thank you, everyone who has participated. Thank you, Caroline, as well, um, and those who I have not mentioned. Thank you for the participants. We are closing at 2.43. Thank you so much. That was a very, very, very good quorum. We hope that you will uh, be tax compliant and put whatever you have been taught into practice. Again, we are on KRA TV. Um, this is a platform where all your questions regarding tax matters are usually answered. We normally go live with different training sessions on MRI because I've seen several questions on monthly rental income. I have seen also some questions on TOT. And because today was simply on items, we did not touch on those. So forgive us for that. This is because we simply wanted to focus on items. Now, if your question had not been answered and it was relating to any other tax obligation, kindly go to KRA TV. When you just type KRA TV on YouTube and on whichever Google platform or um, browsing platform you prefer, you will get KRA TV and you will get all the videos regarding, I have seen also a question on tax compliance certificates. Kindly um, visit KRA TV and all your questions will be answered regarding to whatever it is that you want to know. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we really had a good session. And um, I think from my side, that's all I have to say. Maybe from ETIM's team, if anyone has a parting shot. Thank you so much, Carol. Thank you so much, the taxpayers. Indeed, it was a very insightful session. We need to apologize to the taxpayers to respond please the next time we are having an open door policy please walk into any of our care offices your questions and assistance will be granted all in all we thank you for uh, attending this session we don't take it for granted have a lovely morning and god bless thank you thank you velma i think we can leave at our own pleasure <laughs>